Hello everyone! In today's video, we will have an introduction to the vector mat nodes. We will use the geometry node editor, but the content will apply also to the material shader editor. And since we are going to talk a lot about vectors, we will create a basic mesh arrow to visually represent it. In doing so, we will learn to desi-chain the mesh extrude node to create some basic shapes, like the arrow that we need. This time, we won't delete the default objects, but we select the cube, and on the right panel, we select the modifier tab and click Add Modifier. Then, in the context menu that Blender will open, we select Geometry Nodes. Now we can switch to the Geometry Nodes workspace by clicking on Geometry Nodes in the top menu. To create more space, we can close the Spreadsheet Editor by dragging the top left corner of the 3D view. Now that we have created more space, we start by adding a Vector Input node that can be used to represent a point in the 3D space or a direction a displacement or the orientation of a surface like the normal of a plane. In this case we will use it as an origin point for displacement so by pressing the F2 key we rename it origin. This vector by itself can be used to describe a point in a 3D space so if we add a mesh circle node and then a geometry transform node we can use our vector to describe the position of our circle in the 3D space by specifying the distance from the origin of our Cartesian system in the x, y and z directions. If a single vector can be used to describe a point in the 3D space by using a second vector, we can describe a translation from an arbitrary origin and a destination. So if we now add an extrude mesh node, we can use a subtract vector node to calculate the displacement between our origin and our destination to use as a direction for the extrusion of the mesh. Now if we select the n-gon fill option for our circle and specify a non-zero value for our second vector, Z component, we can start to see the result of the extrusion. And if we change the X and the Y component too, we can see how the direction of the extrusion changes. In order to align the base and the top face of the cylinder to the extrusion direction, we can drag the rotation socket of the geometry transform node onto an empty spot and in the search menu that Blender will show us, we type align and select align Euler to vector. In this way, by selecting the Z component and connecting the displacement vector to the vector parameter, we can use the same displacement vector to rotate the circle and correctly align the top and bottom face of the cylinder. So far, we have simply created a cylinder, and not even a good one. To start improving things, we add an input value to control the radius, and then another input value to control the length of the stem of our arrow. Since with this stem parameter I want to control the relative length of the stem of our arrow compared to the total length of our vector, we can use a vector scale node to resize the displacement vector. In this way, we have shortened our cylinder that will represent the stem of our arrow to make room for the tip. So now, by using a math node, we can calculate the complement to one to our stem parameter to figure out what the length of the tip should be in order to restore the full length of our vector. Now to actually create the tip we add another extrude mesh node and to make it affect only the top face of our cylinder we drag and connect the top socket of our previous extrude node to the selection socket of the new extrude node. Now we can add a new vector scale node 
and connect it to control the offset vector of the second extrude mesh node. In this way, the tip part of our arrow is of the correct length, but is still not a tip. So we add a scale element node. We set the scale to zero and connect the top socket of the extrude node to the selection socket of the scale node in order to make it scale only the tip of our arrow to make it pointy. This is an improvement, but more than an arrow, this looks like a crayon or a stick that you will use to deal with a vampire. To make it look more like a serious vector pointer, we add a new input value and by pressing F2, we rename it tip factor. We connect it to the scale parameter of the scale node. We disconnect the offset vector from the second extrude mesh node and set its offset scale to zero. In this way, we have created a base for our tip that we can recreate using another extrude mesh node. And as before, we daisy chain the top socket of the previous extrude node to the selection socket of the current extrude node. Now we only need to reconnect the offset vector and, as before, add another scale element node to make the tip pointy once more. Nice! Now that we have achieved the first objective of this video, that is to have a proper representation of our vector, we can turn it into a node group to easily reuse it in the next step. As usual, using the shortcut Shift right mouse button, we make sure to create a rewrote node to join each input parameter that have multiple users. In this way, when we select all the nodes and create the new node group, Blender will not create duplicate input parameters. Now that we have created the new node group, on the right we can see that Blender has created a special group output node and on the left a special group input node. By selecting the group input node and pressing tab, we can exit the node group to check which input parameter is what. It's good practice to rename the input parameters that Blender has automatically created for us, giving them unique and meaningful names. So, by pressing tab while the node group is selected, we go back to properly rename the input parameters and sort them. To do that, we open the right panel by pressing the N key and on the group tab we find a list of the input parameters where, for each of them, we can specify the name, the type, a tooltip, a default value, a minimum and a maximum value. Once we have properly renamed each input parameter, we can delete the input nodes that we have previously created. In this way, we can keep our node tree compact and tidy, and in the future, we can easily reuse the node group by importing it from one project to the other. Now that we have sorted out the input variables, we can properly rename the entire node group. To better identify each vector, we can assign them different materials. To do that, we go back inside the node group and add a new set material node. Now, if we drag the empty socket that we find at the bottom of the group input node and connect it to the material socket of the set material node, Blender will automatically create a new input parameter of type material. Now, in the material tab on the right, we can create four new dummy materials with four different viewport colors. With dummy material, I mean that we only care about the viewport color since we don't want to render this scene. In this way, when we assign a different material to a different vector, we will see a different color in the viewport. Now we are ready to visualize the results of the most common vector math operation. So we create a new input vector node and we name it A. We connect it to the destination socket of our vector node group. We let the origin to zero and we set a non-zero value for the Z component. Now we can select these two nodes, copy them with Ctrl C and as usual 
we paste with Ctrl B. Now we can rename the new input vector to B, change the value and the color to display a different vector. And to visualize both vectors at the same time, we add a new geometry joint node. Now we can create a new copy of the vector node group and assign it a different material. So we are ready to display the first vector math operation and we start with the vector add node. Now we can connect the output socket of the add operation to the vector node group and connect its output to the join geometry node. Now we can see how the result of the add operation changes as we change the input add end. Now if we add another copy of the vector node group we can better see that the green vector that is the result of the sum of the blue vector and the yellow vector ends where the yellow vector would end if it started at the end of the blue vector or in other words that the two add end and the result form the three sides of a triangle now we can create a duplicate of the whole object and make unique the geometry node modifier by clicking the copy geometry node group button in this way we can change this copy without making change to the original one. Now we can see what happens with the subtract vector operation. This time we see that the result of the subtract operation is a vector that goes from the tip of the second vector to the tip of the first vector. Or in other words, if we assume that a vector represents a point in space, the difference between two vectors represent the displacement that goes from the second point to the first point or to rephrase it the difference between the point a and the point b is a vector that goes from the point b to the point a now that we have covered the basic add and subtract operations and after we change the yellow color for a more vibrant red we can move to the projection operation as before we duplicate the entire object and make a unique copy of the geometry node modifier and as good practice every time that we make a new copy of the geometry modifier we rename it with a meaningful name now we are ready to change the vector operation from subtract to project as we can see the vector a projected onto the vector b is a vector parallel or antiparallel to the vector b that is obtained with a projection of the vector a orthogonal to the direction of the vector b maybe we can better understand this operation if we visualize the projection vector that starts from the tip of the a vector and is orthogonal to b to better see the point of intersection of these vectors we can activate the x-ray transparency mode of the 3d viewport we can obtain the same result of the project operation using the dot product operation but since the dot product operation returns the length of the vector and not the vector itself we will have to use a normalized vector node and a scale vector node to change the length of the b vector in order to obtain the desired result it's important to notice that in order to get the correct result we need to normalize the b vector before using it to calculate the dot product otherwise the end result will be multiplied by the length of the b vector whereas with the normalize operation we only care about the direction of the b vector and not its length now we can move on and as before we duplicate the entire object and create an independent copy of the geometry node modifier to display the results of the cross product operation as you can see the cross product of the a and b vector is a new vector that is always orthogonal both to the a and b vector and its length is the product of the length of the two vectors and the sinus of the angle between them this means that if the two vectors a and b are orthogonal to each other the cross product will be at its maximum 
that is the length of the vector a multiplied by the length of the vector b by the sinus of 90 degree that is 1. At the other end, when the two vectors a and b becomes parallel or antiparallel, the sinus of the angle between them goes to zero, so the cross product goes to zero as well. Finally, the last vector operator that I'm going to show you today is the reflect operation. This operator creates a mirrored version of a vector along one mirror plane that is defined by its normal vector. So, in this case, the reflect operator applied to the vector A and the vector B is a mirrored version of the vector A reflected on a mirror plane that is orthogonal to the B vector. Here I sketched the mirror plane to make it more clear, but maybe if I slightly change the B vector and I properly redraw the mirror plane, you will see it more clearly. I hope that you will find this brief introduction to the basic vector math operators useful, especially when you will create your next geometry node modifier. Maybe the next time we will concern ourselves more in creating nice objects than with the math. Bye bye!